Good evening everybody and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. On tonight's show we'll be talking about going for your goals and dreams no matter what or who tries to get in your way. My guests include ex EastEnders star Pooja Shah and Jill Fielding from The Secret Millionaire to share their experiences and secrets of success. And this is your show as you know so if you'd like to participate at any point you can give us a call on 020 7686 6300 and you can also email chris at chrissybshow.tv. Do you have a dream? What is it that you're, you know, you're going for in life? And maybe what's trying to stop you from getting there? And how are you dealing with it? Do let us know because we'd love to read your comments out on the show tonight. But first, let's go to our lovely Lisa Marie, Hi, who's Christy. got some good stories for us, haven't you, Lisa? I do. I've got a few examples of exactly what you're talking about. People who mm. didn't know how to take no as an answer. Um, mm. So, I mean, there are a few that people you don't, don't recognise. You don't strike with a person that... No. Nope. Gives up easily. I don't. Even like, because I, I changed careers like about um, over a year and a half ago. So I was working in retail and mm -hmm. wanted to work in housing. And I got rejected twice after going through all the sending, you know, sending all the stuff out and all that. Yeah. And I was like, no, carried on. And I work there today. So yeah. Oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't. Like, got it from my mum. <laughs> okay, but um, going back, there are, so there are some things that people will recognise and people that don't. Um, Bill Gates is a big one. Um, he didn't see Michael Shoe in for success after he dropped out of Harvard, which is obviously one of the top Ivy League schools, uh, universities, colleges in um, America. Mm -hmm. And he started a failed business first uh, with uh, the Microsoft Coast founder, Paul Allen, called Trafo Data. That's probably why it failed. I mean, why would you call it <laughs> Trafo Data? Where were they going with that? Um, but while this early idea didn't work, obviously his later work did, um, as he created the global empire that is Microsoft. And another person that just springs to mind, um, and I can't remember his name, forgive me, uh, the guy that started um, Sony, mm -hmm. he didn't have to take no for an answer. When his first, um, his first product, which was a rice cooker, sold only 100 um, items because it burned the rice rather than cooking it. Oh. <laughs> But obviously, Oops. didn't give up. That didn't and work out too well. Sony, yeah. hello nowadays. You know, that's another one. Um, another big one, Oprah Winfrey. I think everybody knows who Oprah Winfrey is. You know, uh, one of the most iconic faces on TV, as well as one of the richest and most successful women in the world. Um, she faced a hard road to get to that position. Can you believe that she was told, um, she was fired from her first job in journalism because she was told she wasn't fit for TV? Ooh. I bet that person's kicking himself how right now, seeing as how right and about okay. now Oprah is a billionaire with her own TV network as well as so many different things. I mean, so I remember long used... people get it sometimes, don't they? That's why you can't listen to people. I all used the to time. remember like wanting to watch her show, uh, want to be on her show, sorry, after watching it. You know, one of those ones where she does those surprise things, tells the guests, look under their seats, and they've got like a ticket to America, <laughs> and it's like, why not do that here? Kind of thing, you know. Um, so there's one, nothing under your chair, darling. <laughs> Never mind. Maybe next week. I live in hope. <laughs> um, Sidney Poitier. Um, he was uh, like one of the first like black uh, actors in Hollywood when at a time when they weren't really accepted to be on the big screen. In fact, he was told after his first audition by the casting director, "Why don't you stop wasting people's time and go become a dishwasher or something?" <gasps> That's so rude. He showed. He vowed from that moment on that he was going to go out there and make it. See, this is a difference, right? Because you get those people, if they hear something like that, they will yeah. just go into their shell and they will just give up and say, yeah. you know what? They're this right. is what, this is a kind of thing that I'm going to keep facing all my life. It's not yeah. even worth trying. And there's others that will say, you know what? I'm going to prove to you and I'm going to prove to everyone that I will do it. And they make it. And he didn't just prove them wrong. He went on to win an Oscar and becoming mm. one of the most well-regarded actors in the business. I mean, not everyone can win an Oscar. I mean, you see some people yeah. that get promoted as being Oscar nominated, but not everyone wins an Oscar unless you're like Meryl Streep and win like three or something like that. But you know, um, he totally transformed that, totally took that no mm. and turned it into a yes. I just don't understand why people say things like that to other people. It's so cruel. I think it's like they don't, it's like, they're in a position to help someone and encourage them. Okay, if you, they genuinely think that the person isn't any good at something, okay, you can say it in a polite way, not to shatter their dreams. 
But otherwise, you know, why? It depends because nowadays that would just have made good TV, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, what people, like we said about the X Factor. It is what Monday, people right? tune in to yeah. see, isn't it? Mm. Um, another person, Harrison Ford, you know, that little known actor. Um, in his first film, he was told by the movie execs that he simply didn't have what it takes to be a star. Uh, today, with numerous hits under his belt, icon iconic portrayals of actors like Han Solo, Indiana Jones, and a career that stretches decades, I think it can uh, definitely show that he has got what it takes. Mm. Just what do you think keeps bit? him going, Lise? I think for him, it's the love of doing it. I mean, he, I've seen like quite a few of his films, and he can play from like the Indiana Jones type, you know, going after like chasing after jewels and something's rolling down behind you <laughs> to being like, um, oh my gosh, I forgot the name of the film. It's that horror story, uh, uh, like a, 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 a ghost thing, someone, yeah. But he, I think, I think he one. doesn't, you don't know. <laughs> it's really Sorry. gone from my mind. It's really well, so we'll tell again. <laughs> She's trying beneath. to tell me. <laughs> is it What Lies Beneath, I think it is called. Poltergeist. No, no what are you talking about? I think it's What <laughs> Sorry, Lies, it, it is, see, yeah. I'm being told by people who do go. Our next guest since we've spoken to her, and this is Pooja, everyone, <laughs> an actress herself. So she's she See, can probably say. That's why she was saying, "Yeah, it is what lies." What lies in you? How are you, Pooja? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Well, thank you know, you. listening to your stories, I remember reading an article about Shakira, and she oh. said that her music teacher said that when she sang, she sounded like a sheep or a goat and she should oh, give up. And I look at her that. now. Oh, a strangled goat. And she did the same thing, thought, oh, well, you know what, I'm going to do it. And she did it. It's so. amazing, isn't it? Mm. People have got this determination in them. I've got a couple that. more for you. We have, again, a very little known director by the name of Steven Spielberg. ET phone home, anyone? Well, <laughs> his name is obviously synonymous with big budget. Um, but he was rejected from the University of Southern California School of Theatre, Film and Television. Not once, twice three times. Um, he eventually wow. attended school at another location only to drop out <laughs> to become a director before finishing. But 35 years after starting his degree, he returned to school in 2002 to finally complete his work and earn his BA. Not that he oh. needed it, but you know, at least he finished it what he started. I liked it. And another one, and this final one, she is like, she's an example for, for everyone, I think. Um, her name is Sarah Blakely, and some people would be like, huh, who? But if I said the word Spanx, you know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. So at 29, um, she ploughed her, only she had $5,000 uh, in life, $5,000, sorry, in life savings into developing the prototype of these pants. And um, because she'd made so many like cold calls to so many different um uh people who make hosiery makers and people like that and um she was just based they all thought she was crazy they were like told her no it's never going to work it's not going to happen um so soon as how that at 41 she was the youngest person to debut on the forbes world billionaires list i mm. think that they were slightly wrong <laughs> i mean Spanx from it grew from just the um the tights that everyone put on, to now they have shorts, full body suits. They do them for men. There's, oh there's Spanx t-shirts. Think about that. It's not just the ladies. It's she's she. I think she was at the last um, New York Fashion Week. Like they were actually doing a range as well and showing how far that it's come from just the tights yeah. that were stocked. Um, so now this whole range. And like I said, at 41, she's a billionaire. I think that. She's anyone done really can well for herself then. And That's something you said there lots of she said she made lots of cold calls, right? Yeah. And, and what she, what actually shocked her was that um it's a lot of men. She said I was shocked that only men seem to make women's undergarments. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, you've got, there's a lot of women who have well, been able to... you kind of understand why they would. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Maybe. I won't mention anything here, uh, but, but um it, it's funny cuz even as I was uh like looking at her, it made me think of someone like Michelle Moan who um started off Ultimo who, when she, again, mm. couldn't find the right underwear and the right shape and fit, she started it off herself. And again, was probably rejected numerous times. Well, but some again, people would her. say, oh, well, they don't have it. Nah, Hard luck for me. Others will actually say, OK, if, they, if it's not provided for me, I'm going to do it myself. I just Another need to figure out what we're missing. Ladies, tell yes. me. Come on, we can do something here. <laughs> Billionaires. 
<laughs> Lisa Marie, thank you very much. No problem. Now, we are going to speak to Pooja. We've run out of time for this part, though, but we're yes. going to speak to you after the break all about your acting career and your future plans as well. Okay. So if you want to participate as well, do email us on chris at chriscbshow.tv. And you can also give us a call if you want. If you have a question to ask or like to, to you know, make a comment about the topic tonight, you can call us on 020-7686-6300. Join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show and I'm going to go straight over to Pooja, who's Hello. here to talk to us about, all about her acting. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. Now tell us, Pooja, growing up, what were your dreams for your life? What did well, you want to do? Do you know, it was funny because um, my uncle told me he found a video, a home movie, um, the other day of me when I was nine. I don't remember this at all. And he was saying, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I'd said, an actress. Oh, and you don't remember Apparently that. my dream came true, but I don't remember that being my dream at that age. I wanted to be oh. a vet originally, I remember that. I wanted to work in London Zoo. Oh, yeah. So exactly. like an air hostess, a normal one. I, yeah, that's well. well. It looks <laughs> so glamorous, doesn't it? Probably not at all, but never no. mind. <laughs> So then tell us, how did you actually get into it? Because did you, did you go for it straight away or did you sort of go in another direction and want to do something else first? Um, well, I, I didn't know any other actors actually, so I kind of, it was a trial and error process for me. Mm -hmm. I started going to some uh, local youth theatres when I was a kid. Uh, I think my parents sent me there just to keep me out of the way, to be honest. They didn't well, your parents were quite supportive, like, like, like Yeah, that, I think they, they were, as long as doctor. they thought it was a hobby. Oh. <laughs> when I suddenly went, actually, I want to do this for a living, it was like, uh-oh. What we, why are you not a doctor? Why are you not a pharmacist? Why are you not an optician? I've <laughs> got hundreds of them in my family. That's all everyone does. So I was like, I want to do something else. And yeah, um, yeah I went on, uh, went to university and studied uh, theatre there and it all just kind of snowballed on from okay. there. And what was it like there studying? I loved yeah, I was so. in Brighton and I love Brighton. Oh, nice. It's such a great place and it's a very creative town. Yeah. And it's just full of artists and designers and musicians and actors and everyone. Mm -hmm. So I found it quite an inspirational place to be. Okay. Did, did you miss home though? I was only an hour away from home, oh, so it yes. wasn't too bad. I'd pop home every weekend, <laughs> get some mum's home cooking and then go back again. Okay, so what did you do before EastEnders? Or was, it, was that your first sort of break into acting? Um, no, actually, I had a, quite a lot of work on my CV before EastEnders, but oh, that's probably us. the most well-known thing. Mm -hmm. um, I did a, a Sky One show called Is Harry on the Boat for 18 episodes about mm -hmm. holiday reps I, out in Ibiza. So I got to live at the age of 22 out in Spain for oh, nice. six months. It was fantastic. Oh my gosh. And um, I also was, had a little part in Bend It Like Beckham. Um, so Yes, I yeah, do remember that. So that's kind of, that's all happened pre, <laughs> pre EastEnders. Okay, and then is, was instead of something you really wanted to go for or was it like The opportunity just um, came up. Yeah, it was an audition. My agent rang me and said, they're looking for a, a daughter in this family. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to go along? And I thought, well, you know, there's going to be hundreds of girls, thousands of girls. And uh, I just got, Every time I got recalled, I realised oh, there's less and less girls here. I might actually oh. have a shot at this. And then I went along to one and there was me and two other actresses. Yeah. And I said, right, where's everyone else? And they were like, no, this is it. It's out of you three. And I, that's when the nerves really kicked in. I was oh. like, oh my God, I can actually Now get you realise you actually stood in for Yeah, a I had chance. a chance suddenly, yeah. <laughs> So, so how did it progress from there then? Was it, was it quite nerve-wracking, the, the actual auditions? Or? Um, no, those weren't too bad. It was only at that point I started to get scared. Because up until mm. then, I really didn't think I had a shot. So when I realised I actually was in with a chance, I don't yeah. think I slept for about three weeks until my oh, agent ran bless. in and gave me the good news. Yeah. So it was, yeah, it was really fun. What was your first day like there? Frightening. Absolutely terrifying. My very first scene was with um, Wendy Richards, uh, bless oh. her. And, you know, she, she'd she been on the show since day one. So mm. I'm just sitting there shaking and oh. I think the director had to say, can you, can you not look so <laughs> nervous? And I was like, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That just makes you worse, doesn't it? I know. <laughs> yeah, I was scared. But it was they're all so nice and being on the, the square was weird. Like yeah. a show that I've watched. Well, was it something that you used to watch regularly? I watched when I was at uni, yeah, all the time. And then suddenly I'm standing there thinking, This is surreal. This is really surreal. Yeah. But it was fun. Everything's a little bit smaller in real life as well. Is it? The sets are all like twenty percent smaller, I think. I don't know why. But so, <laughs> it's great. So tell us some of your things that you went through there, some like experiences that can maybe help our viewers. Um, what, what do you mean? With the senders itself? Yeah, or? yeah. Well, it was just a bit of a whirlwind. Everyone said to me things like, you know, you're going to go from no, you know, no one knowing who you are to suddenly everyone knowing who you are overnight. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's just going to be the most surreal experience. And I thought, nah, it's not, it's not, that can't happen. And they weren't kidding. Honestly, overnight, suddenly my life changed and I couldn't do the things I used to be able to do. 
Um, and so that's southern, wow. That's it was, yeah, yeah, I mean, there yeah. was some, it was a brilliant experience as well, but there mm. was also some parts of it that were just quite scary. Yeah. Um, and it's only now, really, my life is starting to calm down and seem a little yeah. bit more normal. So this is a thing, because sometimes people really, really, really want something in, in life. And there are people that, there's people that are afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. But there are also people that are afraid of being really successful because it, you do have to adjust and it does change your life. And yeah. like, especially if you're going into acting or you want to be a singer or something, your whole life changes. It's just, yeah. not, it's not the same anymore. It's never, I mean, you can think that you'll be prepared for stuff, but you never are prepared for something. No one can be prepared for the unknown. Yeah. But every, you know, avenue anyone takes in life has pros and cons and you've just got to weigh them up and decide if it's mm -hmm. the right thing for you to do. And what was it like the Ferreira family? What was it like working working with them? It was brilliant. I knew a few of the actors before um, we started EastEnders together anyway, so we were really like a family. Yeah. And we'd just hang out all the time and it was good. It was like just having all my, my boys on set, having all my brothers and it, it was just really fun. Oh, it was really fun. So, so what are you doing now with, with yourself? What have you done since EastEnders um, and what are you trying to I've done a few do bits and pieces. I, I crossed over to the other soap. I did a bit of quarry. Did you? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> oh, oh, which one do you watch, by the way? Lisa? I'm sorry. <laughs> Manchester Girl, Northern Girl, it's Coronation Street. Are you oh, serious? No way. I'm oh, sorry, EastEnders, I mean, no disrespect. I just think, I don't know how they don't manage to live their lives, like, not on antidepressants. Because <laughs> even if you get married, it's like, I, if, if it was me and I was married on EastEnders, I would want to leave the country at Christmas because there's a risk that yeah. my husband's going to die or someone's going to get blown up. Or something. Do you know what I mean? Give me Coronation Street any day. But isn't it just as bad? Because I don't watch Corey, I have no, to admit. No, Coronation Street is so much better. You do but actually have Every time I've switched the channel, it's like explosions and car crashes. Well, things and like that happen, but then, you know, this is just normal everyday life, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's still prefer Coronation Street. Okay. Oh, anyway, Corrie, yes, yeah, so what else did you do? Um, I did a, a police drama called Missing with the lovely Pauline Quirk for two series, mm. um, which was great. And uh, most recently I've done a couple of short films. I'm doing a feature film in the summer. The only reason I don't know is because I don't watch much TV. Oh, okay? that's fine. Because I'm really like, I don't have time to watch TV. That's fine. So that's you, have fine. To, you have to tell me, yeah. Um, I, I've produced a, a short film myself that has just been accepted in the film festival called the Rob Knox Film Festival in oh, June. Is so that what we've got a video of? No, we oh, okay. got a video. Oh, tell um, me about that one first. <laughs> it, that's, um, I did uh, six episodes of a web series called Last Contact. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, it was so funny. The scripts are hilarious. And it's about these four scientists trying to prove that there's alien life out there. But they run out of funding and they're all a little bit stupid. Oh. Um, so they have staff <laughs> meetings that they can't be bothered to have. And, and they can't be bothered. To, and my character, play is, she's basically called Rashmi. And she loves cooking, but she's terrible at it like poisons everyone all the time um, and she's just a bit ditzy and a bit stupid and the conversations they have are just completely surreal but I mean I can't I haven't seen any of the full eps yet but oh, I, can't wait. I can't wait to see them oh should we see a clip we can see a clip that's actually a staff meeting clip which is not not anything to do with the actual episodes it's just all a right. sort of teaser of okay. to show let's, what the let's characters take a look like. at, the, at this clip my things. Right, any other business? Does anyone object? Oh, Harry does. All the time. No, I don't. Just some of the time. Well, does anyone object if I move into the kitchen? No, off you go. No, not now. Why not? What if I said please? No, I mean move into the kitchen. I'm being kicked out of where I live. Why? Because they found out I was living there. Doesn't Laura already live in the kitchen? Oh, only in the cupboard. I was thinking of sleeping under the table. Because? It's flat there. No, sorry, you can't sleep under the table. Why not? Because that's where I sleep sometimes. What, on that dirty lumpy rug? Oh, that'll explain the footprints. You could move upstairs. They've got space. And pigeons. Laura, are you mistaking the roof for upstairs again? I'm going to my cupboard. I'm going under the table. I thought I said... Oh, well. Where do you live now, John? Meeting adjourned. Apuja, how do you actually manage to do these acting scenes without 
laughing or I bet you have a lot of outtakes. Oh my God, they've got hours and hours. And some of them were just, they were so funny. We just yeah. couldn't get through it. And the problem is once you get that, in that point, you know, where you know, I can't laugh, all you want to do is laugh. It <laughs> took I've a been there time. before, haven't I, Lisa Marie? <laughs> Gosh, it hasn't happened on a live show. I'm really hoping it doesn't because once I start, I do not stop. <laughs> So when are we going to be able to see that on, on the screen? Um, I, we're hoping it's going to be in the summer. Um, right. It should be online. I'm not exactly sure when it's mm. going to be online, but they have a, a Twitter page called uh, Last Underscore Contact, I think. And mm -hmm. They've got a Facebook page and their own website, which is always kept up to date with all the information. Right. So anyone can just find it online okay. and, and have a look. Pooja, what keeps you going? Because I know sometimes it can't be easy. It's a lot of hard work. What keeps you actually motivated to, to keep going and you know, pursuing your goals? Well, I just, I'm not sure what else I could, not what else I could do. That makes me sound like I have no skills whatsoever. <laughs> no, well, I, I don't. that cut. <laughs> <laughs> just, um, it's, it's my passion. It's what I really want to do. And I'm just prepared to take the downs um, mm. because I know sooner or later there's going to be an up. And yeah. uh, I just love it. And I love like watching my friends and family's faces when they see me on screen and stuff. You know, yeah. it's worth it just to make them all happy as well. Right. So that's, that's what makes me want to keep going. And maybe if we've got anyone watching now that, you know, it's a budding actress or actor and that they're saying, they'd like to ask you honestly, what are the pitfalls, what are the difficulties that a person might go through? What would you say to them? Well, I'd say you do have to have a sort of tough skin, I suppose, because mm. there are times where you will get rejected for jobs. It happens to every actor, you know, even A-listers, they, they get it. Mm -hmm. um, and you just can't let it get you down. And you can't take it personal because you might not get a job purely on the fact that you're an inch too short or... You know, Gosh, really? it can be, yeah, it can be that ruthless, but you've got to also understand and, and just be prepared that as much as you could very easily not get a job, you could just as easily get a job and you have mm. no idea what's around the corner. Yeah. Anyone can offer you any fantastic role at any time in your life can completely change. So just stick yeah. at it if that's what you want to do. I, that's what I'd say. Yes. That camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pooja, thank you very, very much. Now, you are going to stay with us because afterwards, after the break, we're going to be speaking to Jill Fielding, who's very successful in her own right as well, cool. who started, she, she describes in the gutter, <laughs> it's not my, my word, she describes that, and she's going to be speaking to us about how she actually worked her way up as well, and I'm sure she obviously had quite a few knockbacks as well, but mm -hmm. I, I like what you said about, you know, you are going to get rejected sometimes, because sometimes people do think that they're going to go through life and everything's going to be smooth, and, you know, if, as long as they have this, this dream, this goal, and they're, they're fired up for it, that... They're not going to face like major, major issues, but a lot of people do and then they give up. So the fact that, you know, you've said that to You will have trying. them, yeah, but just don't give up. Don't just learn yeah. from it and move on and, yeah. and make, let it make you stronger. OK, well, yeah. we're going to go to a quick break and then afterwards we'll be speaking to Jill Fielding. So join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the show and to introduce our next guest, let's take a look at this video. She's coming home to secretly look for people she can help. There's like five of us here with a baby coming. It really is overwhelming. I just didn't think people were allowed to live like that. Going back to her roots will challenge the way she lives her life. Do you know I spend probably £20,000 a month on knickknackery? Where does it go? It's a journey that will make her face her past. I realise now that actually I'm repaying a debt, paying my dues, I think. At the end of her stay, she'll change lives with gifts worth nearly a quarter of a million pounds. They don't know what's coming. It's like, you know, me knowing that Christmas is coming and they don't know. But until then, no one will know she is a secret millionaire. We get to her and I'll show you the door. <laughs> so it's my pleasure to welcome the lovely Jill Fielding. Thank Hi, Jill. You. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So tell us about, a bit about your background, first of all, because you haven't had it easy, have you? Um, 
It was a, an odd start in life. I was uh, brought up in the, the real East End um, <laughs> and uh, because uh, we, there were five of us living in a sort of two up, two down and there wasn't really very much room for me. I was the youngest one and the only girl and mm. the next child up from me, my brother was mentally handicapped so my parents were looking after him and they sort of, I think they forgot I was there uh, and so oh, I used to bliss. sit outside the front door in the gutter watching the world go by so I was very, I think I must have been quite a, an isolated child yeah. really so uh, it was an odd start in life. Um, do you remember your, your dreams at that point like what you wanted to do or what you thought as a little girl what you'd like to do when you grew up? Uh, I don't think my dreams went that far. I mean, I think my dreams were very short term, as I think mm -hmm. most people are. Mm -hmm. uh, most people are when they're that small. I think my biggest dream was sort of to get a donut on Fridays, <laughs> you know, because we had so little, <laughs> and to have oh. a, a treat yeah. uh, was uh, was you know something to look forward to. And I can, yeah. I can remember you know get given a, a sixpence and um, you know being absolutely fascinated with it and mm -hmm. thinking it was magical and hiding it in my sock and you know sort of getting yeah. you know quite involved with you know a sixpenny. Um, so we didn't have very much but funnily enough I you know I don't think I had any major dreams either mm. really I don't think I had any aspirations it was desperation more than anything yeah. was that just think because of the environment that you, you, I, you were I, in I or? think so I, yeah. I, I think you know a, a, a young girl growing up in the east end of London I, I, I don't think anybody expected me to do anything or to achieve anything there was no ambition in the family I don't think no expectation mm. um, you know it was just a you know, a scrabble together kind of, of existence. So really. where, where did you get it from then? Because if it wasn't through your parents or your family or your surroundings, where did that drive that you obviously have come from? Um, I think it, it's quite interesting. I, I think certainly the passion with money as a, as a thing is in all children. Mm. I, I think all children, or most children anyway, like playing with shiny stuff and, and, yeah. and all that uh, kind of stuff, and, and like coins and, and treasure, you know, that, that joy I think is in all, all young children. And fortunately for me, because my parents were busy looking after my brother, nobody told me not to do it. Because <laughs> I think everybody else gets told not to do it. You know, the love of money is the root of all evil and all that kind of stuff. And, and actually, by the time my parents realised it was too late, because I'd already got the bag. <laughs> and I remember when I left home at 16, my mum said to me, now, Jilly, I'll give you two pieces of advice. Number one, keep your knees together at all times. And secondly, <laughs> would oh, you... Great advice. <laughs> well, what that will solve a lot of problems <laughs> that we have in the UK at the moment. And a <laughs> second piece of advice was, would you stop talking about money? Because uh -huh. it embarrassed my mum that I talked about money and I loved it and I thought it was funny and powerful uh -huh. and sexy. And, uh, and I think, unfortunately, our education system, our social system, our literature, our culture, um, mm. things like Dickens, uh, uh, it, it's all negative about money. You know, Mr yeah. McCorber said, income 20 shillings you know outgoings 20 shillings and sixpence is misery income 20 shillings in, uh, sorry, income 20 shillings outgoings 1996 is happiness. Well, that isn't happiness, that's stagnation. Mm. Why didn't Mr. McCorber say income 20 shillings, uh, expenditure 8 shillings, investments 12 shillings? You know, why was there <laughs> no <laughs> sense of growth or yeah. welfare? Uh, but we don't have any uh, strong cultural or social references where money is seen as, a, as an okay thing. Mm -hmm. um, Which it isn't okay because everyone yeah, needs it at the end of the day. I don't think money is evil at all. I think when people are obsessed with it, that's when it becomes evil. Absolutely. But Money itself isn't because everyone needs it at the yeah. end of the day. Uh, money is purely a facilitator. Mm. Uh, that, that's what I always say. Uh, and money is not actually that important to me. But I think it has an equal right with other things, you know, mm -hmm. like physical health or family. Um, it has an equal right in your life. Uh, and I think it just is, you know, we don't have to hate it, fear it, be scared of it, because so many people are terrified of mm. money. Um, and, and as a consequence, they treat it badly. Terrified of having it or, or not having it? Would you say? I, think I think, I think. I mean, I, there was, sorry to interrupt, yes, there was yeah. a point, um, I remember when I was, you know, when, when I was in EastEnders at the, the main peak of, of that, um, my time on the show mm -hmm. and uh, I was warned by a few of the cast members that sometimes the press can have a negative effect on on us because suddenly they think you're loaded and yes. and if you buy a house that's or buy a car that's too flashy you're a show off if you buy one that's not it's, you're tight and you can't that was win. the fear it was like <laughs> oh what do we do how do you know and it was like well you, you can't win in this situation no. if you have it you you're Sorry. a loser if you don't you're a loser and it was like oh god but the, the gosh, ridiculous yeah. thing it's an interesting point you make because the ridiculous thing in our society we have this stupid view 
that people who have money must be bad, mean, mm -hmm. you know, or nasty in some way. And that's just nonsense. Mm -hmm. You know, I still get my chips out of the paper with tomato ketchup. You know, I'm no different to anyone <laughs> else. I've just got I enough money to be able to sort of <laughs> spread it about. And, yeah. and it's a facilitator. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's nothing important. And yet you get questions in the Houses of Parliament, you know, where they're sort of decrying and abusing people with money. Mm. What on earth is that about? Yeah. You know, yeah. just, you know, there's nothing wrong with being wealthy. There's nothing wrong with trying to make profit. There's nothing wrong, you know, people can choose to do that and they can choose not to do that. Mm. Um, but, I shouldn't but judge the ones that choose to do so. Yeah. Well, what's wrong with people who want to keep... To be successful. successful. That's, That's what it is, it's success. Well, you know what it's like. You know, if you say in, 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 the, you know, in America, oh, I'm successful or I'm wealthy, they say, yeah, how did you do that? If you say you're yeah, successful oh, or wealthy in, 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 in the UK, they scratch your yeah. car. You know, <laughs> what is that about? They, do. they want to tear you down. They, they don't That's like right. people Absolutely. being successful. It's a fear. Uh, and, mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's such a shame. Uh, and I'm, I don't think money's important particularly. I think people living their life of purpose is important mm -hmm. and the thing about money is that it helps you to do that because it yeah. gives you time freedom mm -hmm. and as soon as you've cracked the money thing which is incredibly easy to do you can then go and live a life of purpose yeah. and then you can be an actress and uh, and you can you you know do other things without having to worry where the money's coming from for mm -hmm. your gas bill and that's what freedom's about you yeah. know so how did you actually build yourself up, Jill? Because you didn't have it easy. As I said, you know, you came from that background. But then even getting into what you wanted to do was a bit of a struggle. How did you, what did you do and how did you overcome it? Um, I, I have to say I was an accidental uh, acquirer. Um, I plodded along, staggering from one job to another, not really knowing what I was doing. But I'd got this magic thing with money and I would hide it everywhere. And from the age of 18, I started investing it. I'd take a tenner. From and 18? I, yeah, and, mm. and I started investing in shares from the age of uh, 18. And I bought my first property when I was 19. And I How had, did you know to do that? Where were you getting all the information from? Were you actually I, going I, and doing I, it yourself or was someone advising no, you? No, I was doing it myself. I, uh, I think I'd got a bit of the magic from my dad. I didn't realise until quite recently actually that I got quite a lot from my dad because my dad was very good at putting money in tins yeah. and uh, and I think that's a skill that we've lost. I mean our mothers, uh, one skill I learned from my mother was budgeting. Now she never knew it was budgeting, she just had a row of tea caddies on the mantelpiece and when she got her money she'd put yeah, you know, yeah. a pound in one tin and a pound yeah. in another and one would pay the gas bill and one would get mm. the kids shoes. Uh, she didn't call it budgeting but it's a fundamental skill skill that idea of budgeting and both of my parents put money in tins oh. <laughs> and and it was like a sort of squirreling away type mm. of exercise so I picked that up from them right. but I just took it out of the tin and got it invested in shares and property and and, and other things which obviously became you know mm. very profitable over time okay and, and uh, you went through college, did you? I, I did eventually. I mean, mm. I left school the first time at the age of 16 by, by mutual consent. I didn't like them and they certainly didn't like me. <laughs> so uh, I left and, and went out to work, uh, but then gradually, you know, decided I wanted to get myself educated and, um, you know, worked several jobs and got myself into university, funnily enough, near Brighton. Got yourself into university? Yes, I so, did. So, so you worked more than one job? Yeah, I like... did, yeah. No, I, I worked during the day for the VAT office, then in the evenings I was a hostess in the club bar, which is a posh name for barmaid. Yeah. Um, and then at weekends I cleaned toilets and worked in another pub. But just so, I mean, you said it yeah. quite casually, but it's like it's a big thing to do that because people, there are a lot of people that are not willing to make that sacrifice. Sort yeah. of youngsters nowadays, a lot of youngsters will rather like they want to party, they want to go out and they don't tend to think about their future, some of them. And it's like, but if they realise if they make the sacrifices now and they work hard now, they're going to have a great future ahead of them. But they just don't see that far ahead. It, it, it's, it, it's exactly what happened. It was kind of by default and desperation because I knew I wanted to get educated. But I worked four jobs for about 15 months and managed That's to save so up four grand, which more or less bought me three quarters of a house. And that was my first big thing. Wow. I bought a house in, when I was 19 in 1977 for about seven and a half thousand uh, and went to university and I sold it for 30,000 three wow. years later. Wow. So I quadrupled my money yeah. and then used it to buy another house in London. So it was I was lucky because it was the right time of the market, but I was also, you know, I was desperate and mm. I needed somewhere to live and 
um, I was pretty motivated to get myself educated and uh, and to be honest that was the start of everything because yeah. when I sold that house I bought another one and when I sold that one I made a massive leap of knowledge and I sold one and bought two uh, oh. and that was the start because as soon as I realised double up double up <laughs> um, and as soon as I realised the double up that's when the wealth started to come wow that's amazing so we're going to go to a quick break Jill and then afterwards we're going to come back and speak to both of you as well we're going to hear more from these lovely ladies so join us after this don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B show always aiming to show you the happier side of life you can find us on YouTube Facebook and Twitter Welcome back to the show. Now, something else that sometimes stops people in their tracks from going for their goals, going for their dreams, is when they get a lot of um, criticism from people or people say to them, look, you're never going to make it, as like Lisa Marie was telling us earlier. So I'd like to show you this clip of a book launch that I went to recently, and then we're going to get back to Jill and Pooja. So let's take a look at this. It's broken records worldwide. It's a bestseller. Millions of people are buying this book and I had to get my copy as well. I've read, had a sneaky peek at some of it. It's really, really good. There's lots of life lessons in here and the queues are outstanding outside. There's thousands of people waiting to get their copy as well. If you guys are not here, you should be, but if not, you can still get a copy of this book. I think Bishop Macedo is a remarkable man and I'm very interested to read more about his life. I can't wait to read it and I can't wait to donate it to the people that I've got waiting for it. I know that this is going to be a, make a big change in my life and my family. opportunity. I even bought more books as well because I want to give them to family and friends. How long were you waiting in the queue for? Um, a bit like 10, 20 minutes. Because I wanted to get this book of Bishop Macedo and I wanted to read about his life and what he used to do and his family. Well, I've heard a lot about this book and everything that I've heard has just been exceptional. I'm so happy and I can't wait to go home and start reading. Oh, it's going to be an amazing experience to read. Those who get a copy of this book will be uh, victorious and, and will have the opportunity to learn how to overcome feelings, traumas, and then deceptions and, and everything that tries to put us down. It's been a great inspiration for me already. Uh, to have such an amazing, huge, good-natured crowd is really something very special indeed. I'm sure that what the contents of this book, you know, uplifts everyone who is reading, so we want to get ours as well. It's been good, you know, everyone's happy, everyone's excited. It's a little bit cold, a little bit rainy, but you know what, we're happy because we know what we're about to receive is just going to help so many people, including us. So we're very happy to be here. You see, he had a dream inside of him and he pursued it until the end. And now look what he's doing. He's, he's done so much great work all over the world. Even if no one else believes in you and you believe in yourself, that's all that matters. That's the thing, don't give up just because other people tell you you can't. You can keep going, you can make it. Like Jill did, and Pooja. <laughs> okay, so Jill, tell us a bit more now about, because maybe there's people watching now and they say, I want to be wealthy, but I don't think I have it in me. What would you say to them? I would say everybody has it in them. And I think people think creating wealth is this massively difficult thing to do, but actually it's incredibly easy. Did you know if you started... Um, 
with an average salary and just saved 1% off your expenses every month and increase your income by 1% a month, by the end of the year you'd have 22% of your starting salary left over. And if you invested it for an average income, that would be £1,900. And oh, if you wow. invested it in mm. a standard return over a working life, that would turn into a million by the time you retired. Are and you taking notes? <laughs> there's there's <laughs> so many <laughs> things. Uh, uh, and uh, another thing that people can do, particularly for their children, Pujo's looking like because I love to oh. <laughs> Shoes, that's as my a, problem. I think if I didn't love shoes, I would own about 95 properties, but I love buying <laughs> shoes. The thing is, you can do the shoes and you can become wealthy. Oh. Um, because okay, the, now she's the, the, I've worked out that if you save £2.25 a day over a working life and invest it in standard return, so just £2.25, £2 you don't have to give up shoes, okay? Yeah, you you might it. have to give up a cappuccino, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but only £2.25 a day over a working life, it turns into a fund of a, a million pounds by the time you're 66. And wow. you could actually swap that for a pension of just over £60,000 a year. Now compare that to what you get from the state. Oh um, and these simple things, if you take a long time at it, you only need a tiny little bit of money. And saving 1% of your expenditure, you know, if you're at work, let's say you spend £200 a, a, a month in, in the supermarket on your grocery bill. Yeah. That's just saving two quid. Everybody can save two yeah. quid. I mean, it's just a case of buying two for one or something. Um, so actually, these little things make a massive difference mm. long term. Um, but, you, you know, with those things, it's good to start early. If you start later, then obviously you've got to take a bit more. You yeah, know, if you yeah. want big results, you've got to take bigger action. Mm -hmm. um, but you know if you start early enough and certainly if you start with children that's how I know I can solve this country's pensions crisis because I've done it for my three kids because I've had money invested from the day they were born mm -hmm. um, and you know if it, it's it's fairly well established and accepted that if you save up for a child until they're 18 and then leave it till they retire it creates a pension fund of well over a million or so mm -hmm. you know uh, starting with just you know, 50 quid so a month. It's really possible for everyone. It's isn't totally it? yeah. possible. I mean, I'm living proof of it. You yeah. know, it's totally possible. You make it sound so easy. Well, I think it is. I mean, <laughs> you think acting's easy, <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure, and yeah. I couldn't do that. Yeah, I'm just but thinking, like, no, really, why am I not, like, rich already? Just, like, put, you know, it sounds, you, we do make it sound so complicated, and everyone gets kind of sold the dream of, like, oh, let me spend two quid a week on the lottery, for example hoping that okay then i'm going to win mm. that 80 million pounds and over a year when you just think about that if they'd saved it and doing what you're saying Absolutely. and investing it oh my god i, I, I think I, I think i agree though everyone does it's just people need to learn to be a bit more disciplined with their finances and actually stick to it and and not but, but the thing board. is it's a two two-edged thing i always think it's like the scars of abundance it's you've got to get the knowledge, which is absolutely right. You've got to put your two pounds away rather than on the lottery. Mm. But on the other side, there's this big emotional and belief thing. And for as long as people think that they've got to be, you'll be mean if you've got money, they won't ever do it because nobody yeah. wants to be mean. So we sort of have all Such these limiting beliefs yeah. um, and we stop ourselves doing it. And unfortunately, when you're young, you're open to all of this negativity and your filters just let it all in. Mm. And then the more personal development work you do, the more knowledge you get, the more success you have, the more your filters change until you don't hear the negativity, but you only yeah. hear the positive stuff. Um, well, it all starts here at the end of the day, it doesn't does. it? Because if, yeah. if you don't believe that you can never make it or you don't believe that you can be wealthy, you're not, your mind's already going to be blocked. You're not going to think of ways or, or try to find ways of doing things because it's not fair for you. It's like not going to happen. It's never going to happen. Yeah. But as long as your mind's open and you're, you're thinking, you can, I can do it, then you're gonna, you yeah. will find ways of doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely yeah. you do. Uh, the, the thing is, wealth always starts with the belief that it's possible. Just mm. like acting, I imagine, starts with the belief that you can be an actress yeah. or an actor. Um, it, it all starts with belief. And then once you've got that positive belief, um, you can then create wealth. And then the more wealth you get, the more belief you get. And the more mm. belief you get, the bigger it yeah, goes. And, yeah. you know, and, and off it goes into a positive spiral. Until in the end, you don't actually hear any negativity. People often say to me, you know, what's, what's the biggest mistake you've ever made? And I sit there going, uh, uh, wait a minute, I'll think of it in a minute. I can't <laughs> think of it because it's gone, you know, because yeah. I, I, I see even the stuff that other people would say has gone wrong um it's only wrong if you stop there 
if you keep going, it's just, a, from it, just, a, journey, really just a step on the journey, you know. Yeah. So actually, when people say, what's the biggest mistake you've ever made? I honestly have to say, I don't think I've ever made any because they've all just been learning experiences mm -hmm. along the path. And, and it's only a, a failure if you stop there. Yeah, that's you right. You keep going. We've got a couple of minutes left. What top tips could you give to our viewers about becoming successful? Would you say? Um, the, the two top tips I, I would give you, put £2.25 in a tin today and then, you know, go onto our website and we'll show you what to do with it, fieldingfinancialfamily.com, um, and we'll show you how to do that. I call mm -hmm. it share soup. So put your £2.25 in a tin today and secondly, believe it's possible. Yeah. Get your dream and believe it's possible. No matter what anyone says to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Right? Okay. Sorry, is that fieldingfinancialfamily.com? It is, it is. <laughs> Are you going there now? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm writing it all down. If you think, okay. I'm joking, watch this space. Fieldingfinancialfamily.com <laughs> and, and, or, or contact the office, which you can get the contact details on the website and ask them to send you the share soup paper yeah. and it will tell you what to do with your £2.25 a day. Okay, Pooja, are you going to do it too? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in my head, it's already in that can. It's already in that can. So you still buy your shoes, okay? You can still get there. Yeah, yeah. But I'm willing to put about, you know, £2.25 right. I can do. I can handle that. Yes. All right, ladies, thank you so, so much. It's been a lovely show. It's been great talking to you both. And I really thank hope you. that's, I'm sure it's inspired our viewers at home. And, you know, we're all here to support you. So, you know, if you're going through any problems, because sometimes I know people have been through like a hard time. Maybe something's happened to them. They're going through some kind of problems and they, they need help, first of all. They need to get right inside, first of all, before they even try to embark on anything bigger. So if you need any help with that, you can always email me on chris at chriscbshow.tv. I promise to answer all emails personally. And also, if you want more information about our guests tonight, you can visit chriscbshow.tv and everything's going to be there for you to look up everything and get more information. So I hope you've enjoyed the show. I certainly have. Lisa, thank you very much. Thank you. I've loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm so there. Okay, yeah, she's there already. <laughs> and we'll see you again next time on the Chrissy B Show. Bye bye for now. Do you remember how things used to be, babe? So corny. <laughs>